Hello, everybody, and welcome to St. Augustine this evening, The Mike Davis Show. Mike Davis is, um, I think he's traveling today. Um, he should be back midweek. He won't be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's planning and zoning, and he's supposed to be there. So, um, hey, we'll see. We'll see when he's coming back. Um, they don't tell me anything. They just tell me when to show up. So, we're going to pay some bills. We've got A to Z roofing and waterproofing. They offer free estimates and have been serving St. John's County for over 20 years in the construction industry. A to Z offers painted metal roofs for saltwater area homes with warranties for up to 25 years. They do shingle roofs with warranties for up to 50 years. They also install, install tile roofing, cedar shake shingles, designer roofing, and flat roof coverings. Recent job photos with material descriptions can be seen at A to Z roofing and water. Waterproofing.com. Call Chuck McComb and his team for all of your roofing needs. That's A to Z Roofing and Waterproofing.com. We also have Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency. They opened their doors in 2008 and they have proudly stood by their customers through hurricanes, major floods, hail, and fires. Through these events, the agency has become a much needed insurance resource in times of trouble and hardship. Honesty and integrity are the pillars of our core values, says owner Ashley Casey. They pride themselves on being insurance experts while developing strategies that help their clients meet their insurance needs. They truly enjoy the relationships that they have forged, and the office has a real love for St. Augustine, which inspires all of their best. Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency, for all of your insurance needs. We're going to shake things up. I'm only going to do two reads to start, and then we're going to go into the Bozard Ford Community Update. We've got a bunch of stuff happening this week. We've got two different Tips for Kids events. There's Tips for Kids. Join Polly Andrews at Ford's Garage. Have the Jiffy Burger. That's March 5th from 5 to 8. So after this show, before Bollocks, go grab yourself some food. She's going to donate all of her tips to Big Brothers Big Sisters in St. John's County. Now we also have another Tips for Kids on the same night. That's Blue Water Jewelers. They will be at Black Fly March 5th, 5 to 8. Again, before or after Bollocks, go on, have some food, support these great organizations. And then the Emma Concert Association, they have March 7th Words and Music Series with Curtis Tucker of the First Coast Opera. That's 1 to 2 p.m. at the Waterworks. That's 184 San Marco Avenue in Uptown St. Augustine. That is free admission. And then get ready for March 16th. They've got Neil Berg's 50 Years of Rock and Roll at 7.30 p.m. in Lewis Auditorium at Flagler College. The tickets for that are $35 for adults, $5 for students. The tickets include free parking in the St. John's County COA with complimentary shuttle to and from the venue. You can save your seat at emmaconcerts.com. So that completes the Bozard Ford Community Update for us tonight. I hope that you had a great weekend, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me checking out our stream. I didn't turn my volume down. Oh, I didn't boomer it. All right, folks, I have a lot of friends in the studio and some exciting stuff to talk about and some exciting things to meet. Um, so let's bring in our guest, Trevor. Trevor, welcome back. Hey, Amanda. Trevor Good to Mia see you. from Alligator Farm. This is what, like your third or fourth time with me? It's got to be at least that. I yeah. know. I love hanging out with you, dude. Yeah. You always have great things to talk about, but you brought and friends this time. Yeah, yes. not just critters. I brought our manager of family programs. You brought a program. mammal this yeah, time. I brought a mammal. You never know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hi, Josie. It's Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, so it's been a while. Um, yeah. Last time you came, we were talking about um, Croctoberfest, yes. which is one of my favorite events that you guys do. I love yeah. Croctoberfest. So tell me how that went. It I, went, it went, I was out well, of town. It's so sad. You missed a good one. Uh, so we celebrated our sixth annual Croctober okay. Fest. Um, and so we had another sold out night. Um, we had uh, plenty of breweries and mm -hmm. restaurants. And yeah. of course, our conservation organization is, uh, organizations join us. Yep. Um, and we raised a lot of money for conservation, which is great. That's um, awesome. So we supported, a lot of, actually, because we raised so much, we supported a few different organizations okay. this time around. So in years past, I know that it would be a particular organization mm -hmm. that you would be supporting. That would be like the focus for the night. Of but course. you guys did something cool and you started your own nonprofit, right? Yes. So we started the Alligator Farm Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, which is the 501c3, yeah. uh, the not-for-profit, as you would, awesome. uh, arm of the Alligator Farm. Okay. Uh, so this organization is able to directly support those conservation uh, programs that we're working with, both locally um, here in Florida and then across the country. 
Uh, awesome. Something else really cool this year for Croctoberfest, we uh, crowned our first ever brewmaster oh, of cool. Croctoberfest. Uh, right. And so Azalea City Brewing yeah. uh, was able to take home that award or uh, that. Uh, How did that go? Yeah, like, what was that competition great. like? Yeah, so each participant was given a token when they uh, entered the um, entered the park for uh -huh. the night. Uh, and then their fav after doing the tastings of the, you know, uh, 15 different breweries that were mm -hmm. on site, uh, they left that token with right. their favorite brewery. And so, so crowd vote. A crowd, yeah, crowd right. participation, crowd vote, and the crowd chose Azalea City based out of Palaka cool. as their favorite brewery, which is, you know, yes. I'm so glad to see them when they've yeah. been uh, supporting Croctoberfest and uh, conservation in the alligator farm for the last six years. Uh, so, so they're originals, they're, they're OGs? Yeah, they are. They were awesome. the, some of the first ones, and uh, they actually joined um, on as a vendor for Croctoberfest before they even had their doors open. In oh, wow. Yeah, so they were still, cool. you know, uh, refining their space. Um, mm -hmm. I remember reaching out to them uh, all those years ago, and they said, well, we don't have a physical space yet, but yeah. we're in. <laughs> so um, it's really good to see the community, you know, support them and the products that they're making over That's there. That's awesome. Um, they have a fantastic coffee, yeah. uh, cream ale. So yeah. um, I'm always a big fan of uh, any time My they do well. My husband loves the, the, like, coffee stouts and uh, yes. porters. He's really into the darker beers. Okay. Um, I started... I started drinking beer in Germany and kind of got hooked on Hefeweizen. Yep, yep. The and I'm still there. I'm just not an IPA. <laughs> it's hard. It's harder to get to that darker, <laughs> yeah. heavier beer. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I yeah. I prefer the lighter beers as well. And that's why I like their coffee cream ale because it is such like a light beer, but it has that you know rich coffee flavor, which cool. of course we all love. <laughs> yeah. Does that have? So I'm thinking, would that have kind of a coffee and like? It's like it's, chocolate, it's, sort of. It, yeah, it has, has like a little bit of a maltiness to it, okay. but it's definitely. It, in, in color and taste, it, it is a lighter beer, a definite which ale. is great. Yeah, very cool. So, what was your favorite part of Croctoberfest this past year? Ooh, this year I would have to say it was seeing the participants getting to you know choose and vote, vote their people favorite. Choice. Yeah, exactly yeah. that people choice aspect of the event. Um, I think the participants also really enjoyed that as well because yeah. you know it gave them a little extra incentive to make sure yeah. that they tried out all the different <laughs> beers from uh, the different vendors, and yeah. it was uh, a great year because we actually had a few new vendors as well, uh, like String Sports Brewing up in Jacksonville. We had mm -hmm. uh, we were able to expand our reach a little bit, so yeah. really getting all the North Florida breweries uh, to join us for Croctoberfest was a awesome. was a unique uh, unique night, yeah, um, and we were uh, part of the. Uh, award for Azalea City w winning was them getting to help uh, choose our conservation vendor. Oh, cool. Or sorry, our conservation, um, where that money's going to go support conservation. Nice. Uh, and so they were um, they were able to choose the Environmental Education Awareness Research Support and Services mm -hmm. not-for-profit E-E-A-R-S-S. -S. Um, I understand why you need a note. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, they're based out of uh, Central Florida um, and they do amazing work with uh, some of our studies of the local alligator populations cool. and how they're being affected by uh, human conflict, uh, environmental changes, um, you know, everything that has to do with, you know, what makes a healthy ha alligator habitat. Mm -hmm. They're looking at that and how they can support uh, those species. So uh, really, really happy to uh, support them uh, cool as well as, yeah, some of um, our other local partners as well. So Very it was cool. a great night. Josie, what was your favorite thing from Croctoberfest? I just love seeing all the people. If yeah. I can get away from the ticket booth, I love going and walking <laughs> around yeah. and checking out everybody and just seeing everybody have such a good time. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, too. At the end of the night, I was collecting all the token boxes, and I was having people chase after me, like, <laughs> wait, I need to put my token in. Right? So everybody seemed to really enjoy the night. That's cool. I mean, I like I said, I love that event, and I whenever I'm in town, I'm at that event. It just so happens that it's usually on Clemson's homecoming weekend. Mm, and so I don't, first weekend in October. Yeah, yeah, I don't go, <laughs> I don't go every year, but the years that I do go, which was last year. Um, yeah, we went and we, we missed it. It makes me sad though. I hate to miss it. I love that event. Well, I, I think it's the fifth, but it's always okay. first weekend in October. Oh, that's my brother's birthday. Maybe I can convince my brother Ooh, to come. Great birth and yeah, have I, his birthday. Yeah. I've us. seen a few, uh, birthday uh, participants start, yeah. over the years and oh, yeah. they always seem to have a great time. So, now, not, a bad, not a bad birthday gift. <laughs> we at the 904 now have the best sound engineer ah. in the county. Okay. So if you guys need a sound guy, let me know. I've, I've, I've got somebody for you. Good to know. Got somebody Yeah, some you. of our local musicians might. Yeah. yeah. So October 1st is, okay, I, I'm going to get on the, the calendar. Fifth, or October the first, 5th. It's always okay. the first weekend in October. Yeah. I'll put it on the calendar so my dad doesn't plan anything. 
Perfect. <laughs> my, dad, my dad's the trip planner and like the event planner for like the big things. So I just have to get things ahead of him. Yeah. Before he, before he does put it. Them up, put it on the calendar months out. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> literally today I was doing school planning just to get the dates in. So no conflicts. Summer Everybody knows. right around the corner. It's <sighs> it's approaching quickly. And we're, as well, soon as March hits, it's what? Just a yeah. sp- uh, speed. Homeschool mom, like I'm planning the next school year in January. I yeah. start in January. And so it's it's a whole thing. I never get a break, dude. <laughs> there ain't no summer break for me. It keeps um, on rolling. Yeah. That's why I like um, being able to come on a weekday. We were talking about this. Like, um, there are homeschool days at the Alligator yes, Farm. Yes, there are. And Trevor April asked 17th me. April 17th for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> April 17th. And he asked me if I like to go. And I'm like, they're crowded. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go when it's not crowded. It's, it's mostly other homeschool <laughs> yeah. uh, families. So it's a yeah. great opportunity. We it's always, always say, friends. Whenever, yeah, like, it's always we friend, always know a ton of people there. to network with those other yeah. homeschoolers in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, we even get some from... Uh, Georgia or some areas uh, outside of St. John's County in yeah. Florida. So it's unique to see those different homeschool groups interact with each other. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. And we're part of a community that's, um, there are local incarnations. So it's it's not exactly a franchise, but mm-hmm. there's it's sort of that same model. And so there's like three or four in St. Augustine. And so whenever we do do something like, a homeschool day at the alligator farm then we get to see our our friends from the other communities <laughs> Perfect. like it's the one day that we get to see um we got a lot of people watching oh, they got high critter peoples and All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have lots of animal fans in our audience but you have Perfect. some more events coming up we do yeah so we'll we'll, we'll get to some animals here yes, in a second we, but i do we'll want to uh bring up one of the events that um, it's going on its fifth year. It's yep. our uh, 3K Raptor Run. Awesome. Uh, so this is a fun run um, cool. that starts right uh, at the alligator farm. It goes mm-hmm. through the neighborhood of Davis Shores. Okay. Um, and then ends up right back at the alligator farm. <laughs> That's it's awesome. A, it's a quick uh, 3K, so it's yeah. not even a 5K. It's less <laughs> than two miles. So um, any and everyone's welcome. Uh, mm-hmm. Strollers, pets. Um, walk, run. Walk, run, scoop. jog. Yeah, <laughs> uh, scoop. People have shown up in their inflatable uh, dinosaur or or raptor costumes, <laughs> which is highly encouraged. I might have one of those. I <laughs> highly, <actually have> highly <laughs> encouraged. Um, and we, we try to make this fun, uh, or excuse me, this run really uh, family fun um, and family friendly. Uh, and we actually have one of our own staff members dressed up as a raptor. Okay. They get a little bit of a head start, but yeah. if you catch the raptor, you get tickets to our zip line. Oh, cool. <laughs> the zip line. I have, so I've never gotten to do the zip line. And so. Uh, Dude, I'm not a fast runner, though. There's no way I'm catching that raptor. (laughs) All right, so I've got it. I'm going to put it back on screen. We've got the fifth annual. It's March 10th at 8 a.m. Is it, can you still register? You can still register. Yep, if you just go to um, the Alligator Farm website, Mm -hmm. alligatorfarm.com, you can navigate your way to um, that Raptor Room logo or icon that you'll see on that page, and you can register right there. Uh, It's $40 all the way up until race day, and then it bumps up to $45, so make sure you get your tickets before they bump up. But all the the proceeds go to the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey. They do fantastic work with rehabilitating bald eagles and other okay. raptors, such as owls, kites, that are in our area. Um, and also, they do a lot of work with monitoring and supporting those bald eagle nests in our mm-hmm. state. There's over 1,200 um, in the state of Florida alone, so yeah. they need all the support they can. So please come out, support bald eagles, support raptors, support yeah. the alligator farm. Um, and it is on daylight savings time. So we're, we'll be... Uh, Following, we're, no, we leave no, it forward. we're springing forward. We'll be springing forward. Yep. So make See sure you have, hour. yeah, make sure your alarms yep. are set and your clocks are right. So, so get up <laughs> early and work out so that you can reset that clock. Exactly. Then you have excuse for that afternoon nap that you're going to want to take <laughs> <Yes>. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's kind of funny that it's a raptor run and it's for birds and it's being hosted by the alligator farm, which is so known for reptiles. Like. I've got a son, so dinosaurs, like raptors, my head goes to reptiles, but they're, birds are raptors. R- birds, yeah. raptors, you know, there, there's a lot of, like, connections there. I mean, mm-hmm. you say, you know, we're known for our reptiles, and we are, yeah. but I would say we're also pretty well known, known for our rookery, birds. too. Yeah. yeah, our rookeries right now, we're starting to see the ro- those roseate spoonbills and wood storks come in with their breeding yeah. plumage, and it's it's a really wonderful time to come it's visit the park. It's such a cool time to bring a camera, like, mm-hmm. man, I would say bring a lawn chair. If you could hang out in that alligator swamp, 
come early and just like chill out <laughs> get and just yourself watch a those beer birds. at the two cantina know, and dude. watch the birds come in yeah. that two cantina is it has a special place in <laughs> that was my um i had family in town right before my husband and i were gonna start trying to get pregnant and so I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to drink soon. So I was like, I'm going to get beer. So I had <laughs> my mug and I'm just walking around the alligator farm, full grown adult with a bunch of adults just hanging out at the alligator farm drinking. Yeah. And I got pregnant the next day, the next week. <laughs> like that really it was, was, it was my like last your beer. Yeah, it was your hurrah. <laughs> that was for real my last beer. But you know what's great? You, you go through those, you know, nine, ten yep. months to a year, no yep. drinking, and then you can start back bring again. Bring that mug back. And then you bring the mug back, <laughs> yeah. and you can bring your newborn with you in the stroller and, and, walk, around, and walk around with yep. that beer again. Uh, which is story. pretty great about the Raptor Run. Uh, if you do participate, you get one free child's admission ticket oh, cool. uh, with the purchase of an adult ticket to the park. So you can use it that day, you can That's use awesome. it another other time but right. no uh, definitely encouraging our families to participate in this event and i see so all participants get t-shirts all you have the t-shirts and, and the medals, medals. okay yes. i should I was, is the medal fancy the medal the medal's pretty like great this year yeah right. medal's pretty great this year we um have a i think we have a good track record of making yeah. a good medal and i, I mm -hmm. should have brought some today okay um they're they're in well if trunk. you send me some <laughs> pictures if you send me some pictures i'll drop them in the comments perfect love it um so I love that we're supporting the Audubon Society. My first house in St. Augustine that I bought was right next to the Eagle Preserve. Oh. And I had no idea what they sound like as babies. <laughs> <laughs> Different <laughs> than what you think. <laughs> it's not what you think. <laughs> not what you think, yeah. <laughs> it's wild. More of a high pitched uh, shrill, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it's like, it's funky. Y'all, after the show, YouTube, um, yeah. baby eagles, they do not sound as majestic <laughs> as you would think they do. And when you don't know what they sound like and you walk out your door at night to put out the dog, Oof. that is little, not the sound you're expecting. A little to hear. terrifying sound, <laughs> yeah. especially at night when it's yep. kind of dark. Yeah, it's like, we didn't have a fence yet. <laughs> you're like, where um, am I? What's going on? Are there real raptors around happening? here? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so that's a really cool event. I'm excited about that. Uh, send me pictures or any yes. updates that you want me to share, and we'll definitely put that out there for everybody. Uh, Post-race nourishment. Yes, uh, <laughs> your your apples, bananas, your granola right. bars, so uh, snackies. We, yeah, you know these, these are things that are donated by our wonderful sponsors. That's and cool. um, Please go to our website and check out who's sponsoring us this okay. year. Um, so we we always keep it very vague mm -hmm. as we don't know what our sponsors are going to uh, yeah. you know gift us with this year. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> right on. I get it. So yeah. I love. I just think it's funny. Post rage nourishment. <laughs> that is written. We'll keep you by, fed a little bit. <laughs> that's written by animal behaviorists yes. and <laughs> husbandry people. We will nourish you we just won't tell you how <laughs> you have to earn that information um so cool so that's going to be an awesome event that's this sunday at 8 a.m you can still register to run you can still register to run and then if you you know get all the way up to sunday and you realize i didn't register but i I'm mm -hmm. feeling active. Take I'm feeling motivated. Gate. Yeah. Yep. Come, come sign up that morning. Awesome. And mm -hmm. if you know where Mike Davis lives, you can go wake him up while you're doing the Raptor <laughs> run because that's in his neck of the woods. <laughs> We've been trying to build such great community relations with those in Davis Shores and, you know, making this a very yeah. an invasive event. And mm -hmm. here you go. I'm just ruining it. Tell him, <laughs> tell him Amanda sent you. There you go. Tell him Amanda sent you. <laughs> Not the alligator part. Tell him Amanda sent you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are always got events coming up. So yes. you've got the Raptor Run on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, April 17th, you said, for the homeschool yes, day? Yes, we have a homeschool day that's yep. going to be all focused around Earth Day. And Isn't celebrate. that like every month or every other month? It's uh, four Roughly? times a year. Okay, so not year. quite every other month, but yep. uh, we have them four times a year. Uh, we just had one in February. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one in uh, April, and then we'll have two in the fall, uh, okay. one in September and October. Okay, um, cool. This one in April is all about Earth Day and celebrating right. our planet and nice. you know everything that our planet gives to us. So okay. we'll be uh, highlighting our Native American songbirds to our pollinators, like our uh, bats and our butterflies, to mm -hmm. some of our creepy critters, like our yeah. snakes and our, and, our, and our toads, which yeah. uh, we might get a little sneak peek of uh, yeah, some you, of those animals here in a little bit. They're normally themed, right? So it's they usually are like themed. Creepy crawlies around. Yeah, Halloween exactly, and, yeah, okay. exactly. We try to you know fit the theme with the time of the year. Yeah, so what's uh, what a better time of the year than to celebrate Earth Day in, in April? So yeah, we'll be, that's awesome. That'll be on April seventeenth, and then uh, we'll roll into. We're kind of doing a whole Earth Week celebration, if you will. Okay. Um, we'll roll into the weekend on April twentieth with a big uh, Earth Day celebration that's actually free and open to the public. Cool. Um, so any and everyone's invited. Uh, we definitely, of course, uh, want our local communities 
chance to participate as we will be uh, hosting native plant demonstrations and gardening right. demonstrations, nice. landscaping demonstrations. That's cool. Uh, we'll have a lot of partners there like the St. John's County Parks and Rec, Florida Wildflower mm -hmm. Foundation, um, that will all be talking about how you can make your backyard uh, a friendly habitat for all sorts of critters. Yeah, because like the... It's kind of wild because what people think of as far as like the HGTV yard, I mean, that's <laughs> really a bit of a desert. It might look lush to people, yes. but as far as the ecosystem, it's a bit of a hazardous sort of desert. A lot of toxic plants, yeah. things that maybe you not wouldn't... Native, not invasive native, invasive species. Mm -hmm. Things you wouldn't realize that maybe could be harmful to your own children in your yeah. backyard if they were to eat some of those, you know, plants or berries or flowers. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be talking all about, you know, the native plants that you can find at our local nurseries, like Southern Horticulture. They're one of our partners. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how you can properly install those plants to ensure yeah. success. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you know, we're all going to be really hungry after this, you know, huge mm -hmm. gardening day. Of so course. Kaiser's Deli um, is actually going to... Be, yeah, they're going to be on site, um, and they'll be serving up uh, a selection of their sandwiches so people can have a picnic cool. out there in our space. Are they going to be serving the Bollocks Burger? Ooh. So Bollocks is one of the shows. It's our Thursday night show. It's kind of a drunk history kind of yes. show. Um, bollocks Talks and Tangents, and Kaiser sponsors Bollocks, and there's, there's Bollocks soon. I, I know, so I don't know if the Pollocks will be there, but maybe we can convince them to bring. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe. You hear me? We were talking me, about. Kurt? I know, right? We were talking about the menu. We were. Yeah. We wanted to make sure we were very careful. We could, because um, mm -hmm. he's going to do all the preparation out there oh, um, cool. at yeah. the alligator farm. So he's going to do. You know, he's going to have some stuff pre-made, but yeah. uh, he will be making sandwiches made to order um, cool. there. So he's amazing. That's he Kaiser's is. Deli is great. They do a fantastic job. They so do. we're glad to partner with them and, and all of our amazing partners for this. Event. I love that um, you focus so much on local businesses and yes. and smaller businesses and help to support them and you guys are, are supporting each other that's just great for yeah. the community yeah community supports community <laughs> yeah absolutely so this is party for the planet yes um so we've got camp croc wildflower wildflower garden at st augustine alligator farm that's april 20th mm -hmm. so homeschool day is april 17th this is april 20th 10 a.m to 5 p.m goes it's a all day. day it goes all day so you wow. can you know uh, of course, we don't expect everyone to join us for that entire time, but mm -hmm. we realize that, you know, it is probably a busy weekend. Yeah. So, you know, you can take that hour or two out of, out of the day to bring your family over, have lunch, learn mm -hmm. about, you know, how to plant and install native plants, what is good to plant in your backyard, learn about some unique landscaping tips. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with the Elegant Garden. They're going to be actually redoing a low area within that space okay. um, to show all of our community members how to transform some of their low areas in their backyard mm -hmm. Uh, that maybe are they're dealing with flooding oh, um, yeah, and I how they that. yeah so <laughs> how how you can transform those areas from areas that flood to you know beautiful landscapes that maybe yeah. attract uh, some of our pollinators some of our native reptiles or amphibians I keep trying to tell my husband uh, fish pond yeah he's not buying it he's <laughs> like i see so much work in that we'll just figure out how to do something so else. the elegant garden there uh you know uh, they specialize in kind okay. of creating spaces like that that okay. aren't going to be high upkeep. Yeah. So if you're looking for yeah. a low that's upkeep, what I'm for. yeah, something that's really simple, but it's going to really make your backyard pop. Something yeah. that your kids would, you know, is safe for your kids to mm. enjoy as well. Um, I gotta keep the dogs out though. Something that can, it can <laughs> yeah. even be dog friendly. Yeah, come on by yeah. and check out what they're going to be installing. So this is open house. Is it open house for the whole park, or is this coming in it's through not the, for the space? It's not for the whole park. It is. Okay. Gonna, it's actually a separate space to All the right. uh, left of the parking lot. You might okay. see if you are familiar with the alligator farm. You might have seen a giant tent or mm -hmm. um, some large platforms that have gone up in this okay. space to the left of that parking lot. That is our camp croc space. Okay. Uh, we use that for events. Um, we use it for our camps. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we are using it for this community day and celebrating Earth Day. And um, it's a huge uh, w uh, natural habitat that's supported by the, uh, excuse me, the um, National Wildlife Federation as well. Okay, um, cool. So it provides all the necessary things for animals to survive out there, such as mm -hmm. habitat, spaces to hide, um, yeah. you know, uh, water, water, food. food. Yeah. Yep, all those resources. Very cool. So th I'm thinking of the alligator farm. You've got your mm -hmm. regular parking right near the, the complex and then the auxiliary parking is just gravel. to the left it's of that? It's just to the left of that. Okay. Yep. And Perfect. then we ask if, 
if people want to join us, um, you are more than welcome to register on the day of, but you can also okay. register on our website. Again, right. free registration, just alligatorfarm.com. Okay. Yeah. We'll also be giving out those admission tickets uh, that allow a child entry with an adult purchase that day too. So awesome. you can then sneak yourself into the alligator farm right on Very after. Very cool. Go get you a beer at the cantina. Exactly. <laughs> those great beers. I love those beers. Um, all right, so Party for the Planet. I love the art, too. It's great. Yeah, Hybrid great. Design. They're yeah, another local job. company we work with. They yeah. do a fantastic job with Looks great. making all our stuff pop. <laughs> yes. And this one specifically mentions um, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Mm -hmm. So AZA is a fantastic organization, and mm -hmm. that's one of the markers of a quality habitat when you're, yes. as a person that's going to, is this somewhere that supports healthy care of animals and conservation and really uh, making a difference for the good of our planet, you want to look for AZA um, facilities. And the alligator farm is an AZA yeah, facility. Yeah, we've, we've had our accreditation for since, since the 80s, many yeah. years, um, and we've held that accreditation. We are we always hold ourselves to those high standards, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully that's reflected in our park as well. Yeah, I think um, that it is. Yeah, and so AZA, it's pretty great. They um, Party for the Planet's really their event, um, and we were able to apply and actually receive grant funds uh, to awesome. host this event. So uh, part of the, those grant funds that we received, we're uh, passing it off to our community members, mm -hmm. um, and actually some of the plants that we'll be installing will actually will actually be giving away as well. So nice. uh, so through Southern Horticulture, we're able to uh, give our community, I think it's like the first hundred or so community members that arrive there will get some free plants to take home. Awesome. So talk just a second about why is it important to have native plants instead yeah. of just like something that looks pretty of course so yeah. native plants help um our our local biodiversity thrive mm -hmm. um when we're installing uh invasive species of plants um it oftentimes it can outcompete or yeah. overcompete uh other native species mm -hmm. and a lot of times the the species or the flora, uh, excuse me, the, the fauna, the animals, won't actually utilize those uh, invasive species of plants. Okay. Um, they're, they've become used to the native ones, and yeah. that's something that the, it's a go-to. They to exactly, eat and hide exactly. and live amongst the native so, species. So, um, you know, it, it, it breaks down to a few reasons. It is competition, right? Mm -hmm. The native uh, species have... They have their niche. They they won't over compete uh, mm -hmm. with other things. Basically, taking over a space yeah. or an area. Air potato is one of those invasive oh, we plants. We were just talking yes. about those. <laughs> <laughs> that like once it's there, it's so hard to get rid yeah. of. Invasive species are going to die back with our uh, changing of the seasons, right? Yeah. Um, but then on top of that, of course, it's our uh, species that will rely on. Um, those plants for producing uh, berries, fruits, po um, pollen, nectar. Um, our native plants are uh, more adapt to producing that in our environment here. So it ensures that our butterflies, our bats, our, our bee, any of those animals that are going to be migrating through our spaces have uh, their appropriate amount of food and shelter. Um, so uh, native plants just ultimately will do a better job of providing that for them. And also cost wise, like native plants are designed oh. to live here, so they don't need as much so water much for irrigation. <laughs> they don't need as much as far as chemical support through even mm -hmm. if you're using organic fertilizers, they don't need all of that. Exactly. They're designed to live in the soil and they're designed to live in these temperatures, this amount of sun. So. And what's great when we have our harsh winters like we've had this year, when they die back, those native plants are going to come back in yeah. the spring. Uh, for those exotic plants, they're going to die back. They're not going to come back because the, 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 the winters that we have here are a little bit too harsh for them. Yeah. The whole planting zone situation. Exactly. You don't learn about that until you're a homeowner. <laughs> and then you're like, I always dreamed of having this plant in my yard. And you're like, oh, that's not from here. And it will die. <laughs> it, will, it will die. Or it's going to take yeah. everything over. I'm going to have the worst time trying yeah. to get it out of this space. Yeah. My likelihood it's going to die. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. <laughs> I'll be not honest, all of us can have a green thumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm much... Much better track record with native plants because they don't need as much from me. Exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. a low-maintenance plant kind of girl. <laughs> and, you know, because we do live in such like a uh, such a warm environment, you can get some really beautiful native plants that yeah. are really going to make your backyard pop. It's so. Florida, man. That's it's why we Florida. got our name, right? Exactly. Sunshine Florida. State. <laughs> yeah. The beautiful flowers is how we got our name. So uh, native plants are gorgeous, and they're designed to live here. They're cheaper for you, mm -hmm. better for the animals. Um don't don't make your yards a desert wasteland yeah. that nothing can survive in. I mean, it's so cool to see, you know, butterflies and moths and mm -hmm. seeing critters crawl and jump and leave. Creating and an oasis in your own backyard. Yeah. 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 My dogs 
don't love the squirrels, but you know, that's a whole other thing. Or, or they just love them too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably it. They don't love the invasion, but when they invade, they love to chase. They love, they love to chase. <laughs> they love the yep. chase. I've got two Great Danes. No. Two. They're all about the chase. Oh. Well, They're I so mean, funny. so, you know, with these native plants or sorry, with these native mm-hmm. uh, plants that you're installing, you can hopefully, you know, gather a bunch of, you know, like you said, critters in your backyard. And if yeah. that's what you're, you're seeking, mm-hmm. uh, you can also uh, organize your backyard in a way where you aren't going to get a lot of critters. Yeah. Um, I do want to maybe turn this over to Josie because she's going to show us some of the critters that you could potentially see mm-hmm. in your own backyard. Yeah. Absolutely. We do have uh, one last event. That's the RP, RPI or RPI? Yes, Hunt? Reptile Preservation All Institute. Right. RPI, Crocktails, and Night Market. Very cool. So that's going to be on May 3rd. We love night markets. Uh, we can remind everybody of this one. Yeah, that's on yeah. May 3rd. Um, that's uh, $10 out the door. There are no events, Very ticket cool. sales. Um, we have vendors right. from the local area that will be selling uh, their goods. Uh, in the all- This one's actually inside the alligator farm. Yep. Um, it's an evening night event, so you get to see uh, a little bit of a different aspect of, of the park and if you're this is great for you know you're wanting to go to the alligator farm you're not a beer drinker so Croctoberfest yeah. wasn't your thing mm-hmm. um you know who doesn't like shopping yes at, of course night? <laughs> and especially shopping local small businesses exactly it's fantastic yeah um so that's going to be a, a super fun event that's a little further in the future there so we'll talk more about that as it gets closer um send me an email and remind me cause of course of course I'm forgetful human. <laughs> but we do have josie and josie has friends so josie Tell us what we've won. Yeah, so I brought two smaller critters with me today to talk a little bit more about, and they're gonna be animals just like Trevor was talking about that yeah. you could find in your very own backyard. Yeah. But these guys are gonna be of that creepy crawly variety that cool. people get a little nervous about. So my first friend today, this is Linguini, <laughs> and she's been sitting so patiently this whole time just watching yeah. everybody having a good time, and she's a corn snake. And corn snakes are gonna be a native species that you can have right here. and they are gonna be really great for pest control. Everybody cool. sees snakes and they're like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But these guys are gonna help with all of those other critters. Maybe you don't want those yeah. mice, rats, other things in your backyard. Now, she has this beautiful color and they're just gonna be hanging out. Um, a lot of people do get scared of them because of their color. So my biggest takeaway when we're talking about all these native animals is if you see something in your backyard and you're not sure what it is, go ahead and leave it alone, right? But having an animal like this in your backyard would be really awesome to help your local ecosystem out. Now, I do have one other animal friend too, because it looks like Linguini's saying, I don't want to sit still, but she'll be out and about for us to see. And Josie, Linguini's not a venomous snake, is she? She's not, (laughs) right? (laughs) We always get that question. And, you know, Josie was just kind of mentioning how, you know, when people see those bright colors, they're like, ooh, that be dangerous yeah. but no yeah. corn snakes are not venomous they but, are not but they do often get confused with copperhead snakes mm-hmm. and it's going to be because of that bright coloration that she's showing off back here um and so people get really really nervous when they see these types of animals in their backyard and the best thing to do like i said is just leave them alone because mm-hmm. there's no 100 percent way to tell the difference between a venomous and a non-venomous snake unless mm-hmm. you just know what animal you're yeah. looking at I always I'm, tell people two arms length away if you yeah. see a snake that you don't know what it is. You know, I'm get, part get of a Facebook group, and it's like uh, snake identification, and people will post pictures mm. of snakes that they find in their yard to find out, like, friend or foe. And it's, you know, it's always leave it alone. And then there's <laughs> yep. always a big discussion in the comments about what it is. <laughs> Unless it's super obvious. You've got, you know, the contingent that says it's this and the contingent that says it's not and i'm just there with the popcorn like let's see how this hashes out then i'll google it and make you know my guess it's uh, always fun. facebook threads oh it's great <laughs> you can spend hours on those as long as you don't take them personally yeah. they're a lot of fun all right we have another yeah. friend though so i did bring two with me today and both of these friends are really going to be great with that pest control aspect that okay. we were talking about so this is princess over here so jose princess. i do you see you guys might have noticed it. that i put on a glove before yep. i came to hello to her she's a little bit of a squirmy friend she's a southern toad and so these guys are going to be an amphibian and when i'm wrapping my hands around you'll notice i'm just going to touch that glove and not her yeah (laughs) as she's getting comfortable there and this is for her protection okay and so you guys might have heard in the past if you touch a toad you're going to get warts Uh or if you get peed on by a toad you're getting warts right oh she's peeing peeing (laughs) on me right now 
fake news. Not going to happen <laughs> at all. Peeing on a person is just a form of self-defense. Getting warts, that's not going to happen. But yeah. the reason I have this glove on is actually just to help her out. I'm going to let her reposition here. <laughs> she says, here I go. I will reposition. I will. <laughs> She's been also just looking Excellent around. Excellent hopping. That fun hop right there. But these guys have porous skin. Okay. And so when you're touching them with your bare hands, we have all sorts of bacteria and oil mm -hmm. on our hands. So when you're touching them, that can get on them. And okay. unfortunately, large concentrations of that oil or bacteria can harm a toad or harm mm -hmm. a frog. But there are another species that you want to see in your backyard. I mm -hmm. probably have three or four southern toads that live right behind my porch. And I love seeing them every yeah. single year because they're pest control. They're mm -hmm. going to eat all of those fun insects, those yeah. cockroaches and crickets and other things that you don't want scurrying into your house yeah. at all. Um, so it's a great native species to have around and one that really is going to thrive with a lot of these native plants that Trevor's been talking about. Something we do with our summer camp kids every year is we create toad abodes. So when okay. we go and we refresh our wildflower garden, mm -hmm. we collect all those plastic pots. And we tell the kids, let's turn them upside down. Let's cut a hole in them and go stick it in a dark corner of your yard. You can decorate it maybe with some moss or some animal and children safe paint. Mm -hmm. Make it a really fun activity, but it's going to encourage animals who like a little bit more darkness like Princess here or even like Linguini to just give them a nice safe Spot. Now, Princess is telling me she's being a little <laughs> moving and grooving here. Yeah. And Josie, we'll be able to, um, for that party for the planet event, we'll actually be able to um, create tota boats with the community. So, yes, that will be one of the stations that we'll have going on there. Fantastic. Yeah. Very cool. So um, I've heard a lot about uh, the Cuban toads or mm, the, Cuban the Cuban tree, tree frogs. frogs. Yes. Yeah. So, do any of these. Do they help with that, or is that part of the problem of an invasive species? That's part of the problem of the invasive species, unfortunately. Because yeah, um, they have toxic secretions, right, that our, our animals don't like? Yeah, they well, you know, the biggest problem with southern toads is they're going to eat other toads okay. and other animals. So they're they're big carnivores. So oh. they, um, you know, they're, they're a little bit larger than our tree mm -hmm. frogs here, and they're going to out-compete, um, mm -hmm. just like in... Um, you know, invasive plants or non-native plants can outcompete. So can animals as well. And mm -hmm. uh, those Cuban tree frogs are going to outcompete our native species of frogs, yeah. unfortunately, and uh, leave a little bit less of a, a space for them to thrive and yeah. live in. Sort of like um, the snakes that have gotten yeah, into the like Everglades. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The big Burmese pythons. Yeah. The pythons. You know, they're going to um, outcompete essentially yeah. uh, a lot of those other snakes and animals down there. They also eat a lot of the, uh, yeah. the native animals down there as well. So that, you know, that's our biggest problem with our invasive uh, animals, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, they're just gonna, you know, take over, take take it over, right, yeah. and not leave anything left for the other species. And you know, that's uh, ultimately we get what we call monoculture, and so it's just mm -hmm. one type of animal or one type of plant, and that's not healthy for anything. It, it ultimately will then affect, you know, our human health as well. Yeah, because with the with the food chain, with food circle, what however they describe it these days, you know, mm -hmm. you always have you always have a predator that keeps another animal in check. Yeah. And so when you have an animal that can exist in a climate like ours, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have that native predator that keeps it in check, then they just eat everything. They, they get eat, too big. They get too big. They yeah. eat everything. And then, yeah, you lose all your diversity. And, you know, one thing that we know for a fact is, you know, diversity helps our planet thrive. And mm -hmm. um, losing that is, is a huge issue. So that's what we try to, you know, uh, work against uh, in terms of, you know, the organizations we support and really investing into our local communities and our local not-for-profits and uh, our local nurseries to ensure that uh, we're able to help uh, provide um, resources for uh, diversity to thrive. Awesome. And we talked about the indigo snake in the past yes. when you've come on. Of course. And I have a soft spot in my heart for the indigo snake. Yes. Um, how um, How is that collaboration going? I know that we yeah. hadn't found any indigo snakes in this area last time we talked. Yeah. And, the, you know, we there still has been there, there are no uh, current sightings are known okay. uh, indigo snakes in the St. John's County area. Okay. Uh, we are still working with the Orient Center for Indigo Snake Conservation. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I mean, we maybe have mentioned this back in October, but we were able to breed them for the first time. That's so cool. Yeah, so we have two hatchlings. We were considering bringing them uh, today, yeah. but uh, they're right now going through their idiasis or their shed. Okay. Um, so it's kind of their time of the time of the month or time of that like this uh, span where they're basically getting rid of all of their 
uh, current skin and you'll have a new shed underneath that. Um, so it's a little bit of a stressful time to bring an animal out and, it's, you know, have yeah. the bright shining lights on them. So oh, we decided yeah. maybe save it for the next time. I mean, when I go through my shed, I don't like to be the <laughs> Exactly, <lights too. laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, hopefully, yeah, next time we'll be able to bring them on, but they're a so part cool. of the species survival plan and mm -hmm. uh, part of the indigo snake collection within the associations as soon as in aquariums. So uh, we're proud supporters of that. Uh, we even have, and we'll bring this on next time, um, indigo snake adoption kits that you can do. That's so cool. You get a little indigo snake plush, which is, uh, we actually had a have custom made. There are no oh, like, cool. kind of, like snake plushes like that out there in the That's world. Awesome. So we have a very special one. Uh, we also have an, uh, a hornbill, mm -hmm. um, so an Asian hornbill uh, custom plush as well that yeah. uh, you can adopt off our website. And that goes to support uh, the alligator farm and then supports our work with those uh, programs as well. Very cool. So, um, I know that they're all your babies, but there has to be a favorite. What's your favorite that whenever you have like friends and family, you have to show them this one animal? Josie, you have your favorite? That's so hard because it you know is. you're always they're calling people babies. like I don't have a favorite. Yeah. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite switches all the time. I think yeah. it just depends on whoever is the most personable at the moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, you might have seen if you're following us on social media recently that we've been posting about a new arrival in our education department. And we yeah. just got a little striped skunk. His name is on away. <laughs> um, so he is an animal that I work with quite a bit at the yeah. moment. And he has so much fun personality. And we're working on getting him a little bit comfortable behind the scenes at the mm -hmm. moment so that hopefully someday we can bring him out for a 10 a.m. show in the future he still yeah. has a little bit ways to go with that comfort but he is just a ball of energy that's a so lot of fun do you He's do just... training are you hoping to do training with him yeah we're working on training right now so right now a big thing we're trying to do with him is just desensitization yeah. uh, he's in a new space and he's oh, yeah. young so he's learning to trust us and get comfortable with us um, and we'll then be able to teach him a couple of different things that he maybe would have done in, out in the wild, you know, show those behaviors and really talk about why these native species are so important for us to have around. That's something that's so cool about um, having the capacity to do animal training at a facility like this is you're not getting them to do something they wouldn't normally do. It's just cooperating with them to show some of their their natural behaviors so that other people can see how cool they are. And so that's awesome. I can't wait to see what happens with, what's his name? His name is Onaway. Onaway. Onaway the skunk. That's so cute. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right, Trevor, go. Uh, you've already heard me talk about indigo, indigo snakes. snakes. So I'm going yeah. I'm I'm to pass on indigo snakes. Um, right now, I would say probably our uh, male Galapagos tor tortoise, Dirk. Yeah? Uh, yeah, he's right now, like Josie said, we have rotating favorites. Yeah. So I would say he's probably one of my favorites right now. You know, he's on this 113-year-old. Uh, you so know, one of the big boys. Yeah, one, yeah, just you know, mammoth of a tortoise. And he, <laughs> he's just so, you know, anytime we bring uh, guests into that space, uh, he's so personable. Uh, we just actually uh, redid the entryway to our Galapagos tortoise yard. Oh, cool. um, so it's a little bit more interactive and you get to learn awesome. a little bit more about the Galapagos Islands themselves uh, before you, you know, meeting these, you know, giants, yeah. um, which is, you know, a unique experience in itself. For sure. And tortoises are surprisingly snuggly. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've had some experience handling tortoises and they really do love like, Head rubs and neck rubs. Oh, uh, the neck scratches. Oh yeah, are like right where the yes. the big scales on their face meet the like crinkly skin of their neck. Yeah. Oh, tortoises love they that. They love that little scratch oh, yeah. right there, and it's yeah. it's it's so fulfilling to be able to bring people into that space and then like you know for their first time like interacting or touching a tortoise. I'm like, yeah, you just scratch your neck right here, and you know we I recently had a guest who was just like was sitting there for a solid twenty minutes. Just oh like, yeah. I don't have to move. I'm like, I well, I, I do have to get We're somewhere. All yeah. <laughs> We're all content. I do have to get somewhere soon, though. Yes. <laughs> I love that you're having a moment, yeah. but we are on a schedule and we are going to have to so, move. But that was an absolutely amazing moment for Dirk, obviously, you know, because yeah. he got to sit there and just have his neck rub, you know, continuously. But yep. for that guest to be able to, you know, have that interaction and that connection with that animal. So I know on sea turtles, I had to assist in vet procedures on sea turtles. Mm -hmm. And we would do blood draws from a space between the neck and the shoulder. Yeah. And we would have to kind of angle the sea turtle down a mm -hmm. little bit because yep. just kinda. their blood pressure. <laughs> so making sure there's going to be blood there. And then we had one guy that could hit the vein on the first try yep. every time. Is there any sort of like blood draw that you guys have to do as you're 
part of your regular husbandry or? Um, so not necessarily. Okay. Uh, it depends on the animal, depends on the day, depends on yeah. who's got the. As long as everyone's the, healthy, you're yeah, good. As long as everyone's <laughs> healthy. There, there, we, there are definitely times where we've yeah. had to do blood draws on animals. Um, and, you know, it, it can be tricky, yeah. right? Because, you know, you're dealing with something that can't communicate back to you. Yep. Um, and you <laughs> Like you said, you know, it's nice when you do on that first try, yeah. but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're lucky enough, we work with the University of Florida, uh, Florida's vet veterinary hospital, mm -hmm. and they come out to our property every other week, or we can go to them whenever we need to, mm -hmm. and they are able to do most of our medical work and our blood draws and things of that nature. And I love how transparent you guys are, because when you have something that's going on with an animal that is a big event and UF is helping you, you guys tell the public, because yeah. taking care of the animals is reality i mean it is all critters get a cold on occasion mm -hmm. all animals get into things on occasion exactly. and you have to make sure that they're good and healthy so i always love when you see a facility that's honest about that yeah. And through transparency, you know, yeah. we can help educate people about what's going on and, yeah. you know, and maybe make those connections to their conservation as well. So, yeah, it's fantastic. I just um, I love the work that you guys do at the Alligator Farm. And I love how, like I said, how open and transparent you are, but also how much you really care about the community getting involved. Yeah, so I really you. appreciate all that you guys do. Thank you guys for coming. This is going to be the last time that you're going to be with me, right? This is going to be my last time. Guys, yes. Trevor's leaving. <laughs> I know. Ugh. I like it. Yep. But I am excited for you. What's your thank adventure? You, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I'll be moving up to Boston. So awesome. I just accepted a position at the Zoo New England. So helping uh, direct them in a new strategic planning era. Uh, so I've absolutely loved my time here in Florida, yeah. and I will I will be back more yeah. more than enough. Um, but during yes. the winter, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I keep making the joke. It's like, and I keep saying, you know, we'll see how many winters I last before I become mm -hmm. a snowbird myself. So yeah. uh, I'll, I'll be it's back down over the winters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't grow up in St. Augustine. Where did you grow? I up? didn't grow up in St. Augustine. I grew up in Virginia. Yeah. And you know, through so this, you're used to a yeah, little more of a I'm winter. Used to, well, used to a winter, and through yeah. my profession, I've traveled across the country. So this yeah. is an area that I have not know had a lot of experience with but i've heard wonderful yeah. things about the area boston's um, gorgeous so yeah i'm excited for that new adventure so much history there just uh yeah haunted Going buildings from, like, the, the <laughs> oldest like what uh, the town, oldest city yeah to the, the oldest United settlement to, yeah <laughs> it'll be it'll be an interesting switch um the accents Massachusetts accents are a thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing, yeah. I, I, I've heard that I, I need to adjust mine a little bit to, <laughs> <laughs> there, so to maybe fit in a little you bit You don't have a southern accent, but just not having a Boston accent, right? they'll, they'll, they'll know. Yeah, they'll southern like, accent. You're an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> they'll call it a southern accent, even though you don't. Exactly. Like, they can't hear anything else other than a southern accent in Massachusetts. Like, Massachusetts is right, and everything else is like, you're not from around here. You're not from around here. Yeah. <laughs> So I have some uh, integrating to do up there. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be a thing. But yeah, I've uh, um, really enjoyed my time here yeah. um, in Florida and, you know, everything with the alligator farm is such a fantastic facility. Uh, it really is. Um, so why are you, when are you leaving? Yeah. So um, I'll be doing a transition throughout yeah. this, um, this spring into the summer. So okay. uh, I'll be going back and forth, uh, ensuring that, um, you know, everything at the alligator farm is going to mm -hmm. continue on and we're going to have, you know, great success with all our events yeah. and our camps and everything like that. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, getting started with some of the strategic planning that's going to be going up there. That's cool. So I'll be back All right, and forth so you for got, a little bit. I'll be all around. Right. You'll, be, you'll be commuting. That's quite I'll a commute, be, yeah, my dude. A 19-hour commute. <laughs> <laughs> no problems. You've got this. Um, so we also have camps that are coming up. Yes. We're getting ready. Like I said, we, we're scheduling for next school year already. So you guys are... We're, we're, You've already we're, got registration open for camps, Registration's right? open. Our um, Some of our camps are already fill, have filled up and sold out. Um, so Good gracious. We, people you know, are on that. This is the time of the year where I always go on and tell people, hey, if you want your kid to sign up and or be a part of Alligator Farm Camp, mm -hmm. go ahead, get on our website, alligatorfarm.com, and get them registered because uh, those spaces do move pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, where our, like I said, our venture camp has sold out. Um, okay. If you're interested, if you have a child who's uh, teenage years who wants to do the adventure side of mm -hmm. um, uh, of camp, so we do kayaking and paddleboarding and zip line. Yep. Um, get them on the wait list for that. Uh, okay. But if you have a child who's six to ten, um, sign them up for a zoo camp. And I'll turn that over to Josie. She actually um, runs our zoo camps, um, and I sh she can tell a little bit or tell the audience what's in store for them this summer. Okay, awesome. 
Yeah, zoo camp is my favorite time of the year. Uh, as Trevor mentioned, I run the zoo camps. It's something I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And I'm super excited because this year we're actually able to bring one of our most popular camps multiple weeks. Uh, so everybody cool. always wants to know what it's like to be a zookeeper. Mm -hmm. And this year we're going to be offering our junior zookeeper camp four separate times so nice. that kids can come onto property and we can talk a little bit more about what it takes to uh, take care of some animals and Very do some cool. fun things there. But of course, we're going to cover some other fun topics too, like nature's nasty side and our ecology camp and yeah. animal art and talking about the cool things that animals do and how we relate that to painting and theater Very and all cool. sorts of cool events happening this summer. So definitely check out our website, look for those registration dates because as Trevor mentioned, they're filling up really fast. Yeah. And if you're interested in a camp that's sold out, make sure you get on that wait list so that you can try to hopefully claim yourself a spot. So there's not, all hope is not lost. All hope is not right. lost. You can try to get on a wait list and yeah. we do our very best that if a spot becomes available, mm -hmm. we look at that wait list. It's first come first serve on there. And we're going to call down that list and make sure that we can fill up this camp and that anybody who wants that choice, as long as a spot is available, can get in. And I will say you guys do an excellent job of trying to work people in. I mean, I had my daughter wanted her. Each of my kids have gotten an alligator farm birthday. And so my daughter wanted her alligator farm birthday, and that was this past year and uh, this past fall. And so that was um, that was a whole thing. It was let me know late, <laughs> and I go and I talk to the to the you lovely to lady a, there. Amanda. I did. I yeah. talked to Amanda, and she's like, oh, "We were holding this day off because we've got some other things working. But if you'll be flexible and when you want your party, then we can make it happen." And I was like. I love you so much. You're amazing. You guys do a great job. It's fantastic event. You. Anytime you guys put on an event, you just, you really do it and you do it well. Appreciate and you. we have, like I said, each of my kids have had a birthday party and they always get the picture, right? Mm -hmm. yep, and so yep. our refrigerator has the, the, the little the, kid the, holding the alligator the <laughs> on there for their alligator farm birthday. Um, they handed my youngest hurt the alligator to take the picture this year and the alligator just straight up peed right in front of her. <laughs> like right as they were handing it, it peed. Well, you gotta go, you gotta and I'm go. like, okay, this is going to go one of two ways. She's either going to like be chill with it or this is done. We're not getting this picture. And she totally rolled with it. And they, you know, baby wiped the alligator yep, yep. <laughs> and handed it back to her. And she was a champ. I mean, she was braver than her big sister. I'll say, I'll uh -huh. say that. Fantastic. Um, so I love, like I said, I can't recommend enough all of the events that you guys do. Let's run through again. You've got the Raptor Run this Sunday. Yeah. So with Raptor Runs is March mm -hmm. 10th at yep. 8 a.m. Um, and then uh, we do have so next week is spring break. Yeah. Can you believe that? <laughs> so we do have spring break camp. Uh, that that camp is full. Um, so we'll yep. um, be hosting a few of our community members. Um, over, over that week, uh, okay. as well as, you know, everyone else from the state of Florida <laughs> will be hosting. Yes. Uh, so spring break is on the docket. Um, and then uh, a little bit of a lull at the end of March mm -hmm. into April. Um, but we'll, uh, we have our Earth Day week. Um, yeah. So April 17th, that homeschool day, mm -hmm. uh, culminating with that Party for the Planet event on April 20th. What's Perfect. cool about that Party for the Planet event, it's also in our camp space. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are a future camper and future parent or uh, you're sending your kids to camp, it might be a great time to check out that space before yeah. sending them, especially yeah. for those first time campers. We know we get yeah. quite a few of those, you know, um, eager participants who's their first time away from mom and dad. Yeah. So it might be a great opportunity to come see That's the Park. fantastic time to be with mom yes exactly. understand that it's a safe space yes. and that you know you this see is fun that you'll yeah, potentially fun have. and trusted mm -hmm. and so that is a, a great tip if you're signing yeah. up a first timer at camp definitely yeah. check out that party come, for the planet <laughs> <laughs> come the alligator farm before the sensitization training yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works all, it works always it works always um, and then May 3rd, our night market. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, that's going to you know host all of our local vendors um, yep. in, in town. Um, and then we roll into the summer and with yep. our summer camps. You know, summer it starts camp. that first week in June. Um, wow. It'll be here before we know it. I know. How are we in March? Gotcha. How did that happen? <laughs> January was like six months long. And it, in February, I'm pretty sure it was, it was just second. December. Yeah. I know. It was just a second, right? It's, oh. Oh. They always say the older you get, the faster time flies. Um, thank you so much for bringing Linguini and Princess to join us. That was a very cool little introduction to some of our local animals. They're very cool.
Yeah, you're so welcome. They seem to have a fun time exploring and looking around as well. Yep. I mean, they both stayed out and active the mm-hmm. whole time, too, hanging out with us. They really so. did. The lights, I think, uh, they're it's, reacting to a it's lot. It's a little bright. <laughs> it's a little bright in here. It's a little bit. It helps. It helps it with does. the beauty of the humans. Yeah, <laughs> the beauty. Um, for sure, the brighter the light, the the better you look. Is, 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 that, yeah. is that the case? It smooths the skin. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. That's why the lights are so bright. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. I wish you all the luck thank up in so Boston. Thank you so much, Amanda. I it's been I a pleasure to you again. You're you oh, yes. come back for Crocktoberfest, oh, aren't you? I'll be back for Crocktoberfest. Fantastic. We host a um, uh, crocodilian biology and management course each year that we host mm-hmm. uh, students from all across the country, and that's in May. So yeah. I'll be coming back for that each year as well. Very so cool. I'll be around. <laughs> Yay. It's not the last time I'll see Trevor. It's yeah. so nice to meet you, Joe. Nice to meet you I as hope well. You'll come back and you'll hang out with me on occasion. Give us updates. Yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Thank you for having me for my first time and helping me out. Too painful. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. <laughs> I swear I don't bite people. I swear. <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining us. I'm gonna have Davy tomorrow, uh, so we're gonna have probably a pop culture. Bonanza, 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 bonanza tomorrow uh, with Davey. And we'll see. We'll see what kind of craziness we can get into before Mike comes back. So he should be back later in the week. We'll see. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Bye.